Hey y'all, let's look at the multiplicative property of inequality. Ugh, it's about 70 syllables there. Um, let's go back to something first though. The addition rule for equations. We, we all know how to handle this, right? I mean, the, the rule is if you, you know, do something to one side of an equation, you do the same thing to the other side and everything turns out okay, right? That's the reason why we can add five to this. Then we can add five to this. And we, we can say for certain that X is equal to 13. Because if you do something on one side of an equation, you do the same thing to the other side. It works for, you know, uh, the multiplicative rule as well. Okay, it's an equation. If you go, let's say, you know, let's just make this bigger. Nine, oops, nine equals six plus three. That's true, right? Okay, let's say we multiplied it by, um, oh, you know, let's say two. Okay, so we have 18 equals two, 12 plus three times two, six. That's also true. We could do it by negative two, right? Let's say we multiplied, no, let's, you know, let's do it by negative five, uh, let's do it by negative three, okay? So there's our equation, multiplied by negative three. Negative nine, or excuse me, nine times negative three, negative 27. Six times negative three, negative 18. Three times negative three, negative nine. Is that true? Yes, it's true, there we go, okay. But if you have an inequality, that's what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with equations for this chapter. It's an inequality, which means that you know, or a less than, or a less than equal, and so on, okay? Look what happens with this. Let's multiply this by two first, okay? Seven is greater than two, that's correct, right? Okay, let's multiply it by two. We get a 14, and we get is greater than four, right? Is that true? Yes, it is true, right? Okay, but let's take this. Remember, this is our inequality. Seven is greater than two, profoundly true, right? Now let's multiply it by a negative two. Now we have negative two times seven is negative 14. Here's our greater than. And negative two times the two is negative four. Well, is negative 14 greater than negative four? No, right? Obviously, here's the number line. Here's negative four, and way over here is negative 14. That's not greater than that. A number line means that, you know, uh, it, something's greater, it's to the right of, of, a number, on the number, of another number on a number line. So. The point is, if you multiply or divide by a negative when you're dealing with an inequality, you have to do something to this right there to make it true. What is the relationship between negative 14 and negative 4? It isn't greater than, it's equal to, right? I mean, excuse me, it's less than. So it's less than. So if you multiply or divide by a negative with an inequality, obviously not with an equal sign, right? We already showed that that's true. With an inequality means you have to flip that middle sign to make it true. So that's all you need to do on these. So let's take a look. Oh, that's exactly what I just said, okay. So negative x is greater than or equal to two, and this time we're allowed to use reals. Don't get too confused on this. Remember this word, d stands for what? Domain, okay, in other words, what are you allowed to use, okay? Here is our inequality, and don't forget, please don't make anything close to, I mean, just go like this. All these problems are when you, when you see a two, just you know make something and you know, get ready. Okay, so here's what you want to do first though. This is yuck. we don't care about negative x stuff, right? In other words, here's what we start off with: negative x is greater than or equal to two. We don't want that. We want we don't want to solve for negative x. We want to solve for positive x. So we have to divide this by negative one and divide this by negative one. And if we divide or multiply by a negative with an inequality, we have to flip this right there. So we have an x now. We have a 2 divided by negative 1. We've got to flip this to be less than or equal to. That is a true inequality right there. So you would draw a negative 2 and nothing more complicated than that, okay? Since it equals it, you will fill, fill in the line right there, or the dot, and then everything to the left. You got it. That's all you need. Okay. This one looks a little more complicated, but again, don't forget, you treat these exactly, exactly how you would an equation. You solve it the same way. So uh, let's just do it. So we have four minus x, let's, I'll do it in big down here. Four minus x less than or equal to six, okay? Well, we're gonna move this over here, of course. We'll have negative x is less than or equal to six minus four or two. This, no good, we don't want that. We're gonna divide by negative one, divide by negative, and of course, inequality, not equal sign. Whenever you have an inequality of an x, there's another negative two, and this will not be less than or equal to, it'll be greater than or equal to, okay? There we go. 
to graph this, and this time they say you're only allowed to use integers. That's what your domain is. So x is greater than or equal to negative 2, so we can include the negative 2, right? And we can include this one, and that one, and that one, and that one. You know, you can just do as many as you want to kind of show you that that's the pattern that's developing. Okay, here's another one. Take a second, copy this one down. Go ahead, solve it before I do it. So pause it and solve it. Treat it just like an equation and do what you need to do to figure it out. Okay, I'm assuming you paused it and unpaused it. So let's take a look. Negative 3x plus 4 is less than or equal to 13. So I'm moving the 4 over, so I get negative 3x is less than or equal to 13 minus 4. Divided by negative 3, so I get x here. I get a negative 3 here, and this flips. I have greater than or equal to negative 3. Boom. I'm allowed to use all real numbers, which means all of them in between all the integers and everything. So greater than or equal to negative 3, right here. I get a filled in dot, then all the way to the right. There you go. It's all of them. Okay? All right. That's it. Second part of this, let's take a look at spheres. Um, this is not too complicated, and man, it is insane how little complicated this could be, but it isn't. Um, let's look, well, you know what a sphere is, just a ball, right? It's a perfectly round ball, the, you know, it has a surface area, in other words, if you had to paint a bowling ball, that's the surface area of it. It has volume, right? In other words, how much, how many cubic inches or centimeters or whatever of sand you could pour into this thing and fill it to the very top, <clears throat> and that's the volume. The formulas for volume and a surface area, you need to write these down and memorize these, or at least put them on some kind of a card, or at least like, you know, I hope you're doing your notes like this still, like if this is list lesson 91, you're writing this on the top right, and when you go back to this, this will tell you your formula. So make sure you have these down. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds times pi times the radius, not squared, cubed. Cubed. So you need to find what the radius is and cube it, then multiply it by pi, you can use 3.14 if you want, then multiply that by four, <laughs> then divide the whole thing by three. Okay, on these, you can use a calculator just to save yourself some time, okay? Second is surface area. Now you remember the area of a circle, let's just do this first. Remember the area of a circle, the area equals pi times the radius squared. That's a flat, you know, just a flat circle. That's all it is, all right, it's two dimensions. The surface area of a sphere, in other words, if you had to paint the entire ball all the way around, how many square, I mean, how many, how many square inches or centimeters or whatever, it's not just pi r squared, it is four times pi times r squared. That's the only difference, okay. So have those two down, make sure you memorize them and put them on a card or something, okay. The volume of a sphere, Another way to look at this, which is the same thing as this right here. You can use either one of these you want to. You remember how to find the volume of a cylinder? In other words, somebody says, oh, you know, here's a cylinder. Um, uh, let's say the radius is uh, three and it's, you know, I don't know, let's say it's, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's say this is, uh, this is also three, okay? It's a nice, uh, anyway, it's very even. So let's say it's a can of tuna or whatever, three feet high. That's the, you know, the Sam's market, I think. Okay, so well, to find the volume of the cylinder, you go, well, the area of the base is, let's see, pi r squared. So r squared is, three squared is nine. And then you multiply by that, okay, I got it. The area would be 27, I don't know, let's say it's centimeters cubed, okay? That's the area, All right? If you had a sphere, a sphere that, in other words, a bowling ball. I didn't draw that very well, but it, let's, let's say it perfectly fit into that can. Perfect. The sides exactly touched the sides of the can, and the top of the bowling ball exactly was perfectly even with the top of that can. All you need to do, this could have been really complicated, but it's a nice, simple, easy fraction. Two thirds, that's it. So whatever this is, you can find that, which we said was 27. Then you find two-thirds of that. In other words, you multiply by two-thirds. Of course, 27 over 3 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. So if a sphere fit into that, it would be 18 
cubic centimeters. Okay, and this will work as well. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, remember how a cone was one third? Like if you had, if you found a cylinder, the volume of a cylinder. You know how much sand would you pour in the cylinder, or whatever. You know, uh, how much would the volume of the cone be? Now it's exactly one third. Well, a sphere is two thirds. Crazy. That's so genius. It's mathematical. God has order in the universe. So here we go. Find the volume of a sphere whose radius is three. Well, we just did that. The heck with that. We're just going to do six. We're going to do six instead. All right. Okay. Well, the formula way. Let's do it. Look back at your formula. Go ahead and write down the formula. All right. The volume of a sphere is four thirds times pi times the radius cubed. All right. Now we're going to go. Okay. Let's do the arithmetic. Okay. So we got. Volume is 4 thirds. I'm just going to leave pi the way it is. Times pi times the radius cubed. Well, on a piece of paper, figure out what 6 times 6 times 6 is. Go ahead. Pause it if you need to. Okay. 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 6 is 216. All right. So you're multiplying. Either you can go right across 4 times 216, then divide that by 3. Or you can go 216 divided by 3 and then multiply that by 4. All right. Well, uh, 216 divided by 3 is 207. No, excuse me, it's 72. Uh, times 4 would be 288. So the volume is going to be 288 pi. You can leave it like that if you want. Okay, the drawing way. Let's just pretend we have to draw this thing. All right. Here's this. You just completely forget your formula. There you go. Okay. Well, the radius is 6, right? Okay. There we go. By the way, if the radius is 6, how tall is this thing? It's a sphere. It perfectly fits in here. So if you drop the radius, what's it going to be? Okay. This radius drops. It's a ball, right? So the radius drops right here, it drops right in the middle, doesn't it? Okay, so that means the entire thing is like this. Okay, so the, in other words, here is the ball that fits in here. Let me try to draw this better. There, a perfect bowling ball, wonderful. Okay, so if this were a radius, this would, this would, you could even take this radius since it's a ball, it would drop down perfectly right like this. Okay? And you could go, okay, the entire thing is 12, then, right? It would be 12 units high. Okay? Which means that you would find the area of the base times the height would give you the actual cylinder, right? So the area of the base would be, if the radius is 6, the area of the base you go, okay, that'd be 6, or pi times the radius squared, which would be 36 times pi, right? Then you times it by the height. So let's do 36 times 12. 36 times 12 would be 432, okay? So that's the area, I mean, excuse me, that's the, that's the volume of that entire thing, all right? We're not, we don't want the whole thing, though. We just want the sphere inside there. So we have the formula, which is 2 thirds of that right there. Okay, two-thirds of that means you're going to have to do this. 432 times 2 over 3. And again, you can either do, you know, cross this out or just go straight across and divide by 3. Well, 432 divide, well, times 2, oops, oops, is 864. Divide that by 3 and you will get right there. And that's, of course, you, you need to put pi in it. That's the answer is pi. So, there you go. That'll work. Okay. Find the surface area of a sphere whose radius is 4. Let's try that together. Find the surface area of a sphere whose radius is 4. Can you visualize a ball with a radius of 4? In other words, like the, the one edge of the ball, you could drop a radius. If it hits the middle of the ball, it's 4 inches, let's say. Visualize that. It goes, of course, it goes all the way around. You know, it's all 4 everywhere you go. The radius is 4 all over the place. Okay. We could draw it. But we could just do this. We could go, okay, the volume is equal to 4 thirds. That's our formula. You tell me the rest of it. 4 thirds what? Times pi times 
The radius, what goes there? Cubed, okay. All right, well, let's find it. The radius is four. Well, let's just put a four in there, not an R. Erase, boom, and we have a four. And then there we go. Okay, well, what is four times four times four? Well, 16 is four times four. 16 times four is 64, okay? So we could go like this. We could go four thirds times pi times 64. And we could go four times 64 is 256 over three and then times pi. Now, if you needed to figure out exactly what this was, that's fine, that's what you would do. Um, it'd be about 250 times about three, somewhere around 800 pi. No, excuse me, 800 um, cubic um, inches, let's say. Okay, the other way, remember if you have a, a sphere and the radius is four, well, let's just imagine the, uh, the uh, ball dropped into a nice, you know, cylinder like this, okay? We say the radius is four, which means from the top, we look down and go, oh, there's the radius right there, right? Okay, well, if you drop this same radius, in other words, if it's just a, a line, you just go, it just drops down and hangs down. It only goes right there, right to the middle, right? So that means how tall is this ball? How, how, what is the sphere? How tall is it? It's eight, right? Okay. So you look at this the same old way we've always done it. We go the area of the base times the height. The area of the base times the height. Okay. Well, the area of the base, the base is four. Four squared is 16. So you have 16. Okay, and then times the height is going to be times 8. That'll be 128 times pi. Okay, all right. Now what we need to do, we need to multiply it by a certain fraction. Remember, a cone is one-third. What fraction are we talking about here? Two-thirds, right? Okay, so this we need to multiply by two-thirds. And... Right across, 128 times 2 is 256, and 1 times 3 is 3, and that's how many pi? And lo and behold, looky there, same thing. So, that's how you do it. Okay, memorize that formula and use it. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and try A through E and pause it, and I'll give you the answer for A in a second. Okay, A looks like this. Don't forget, you have to change the sign of that greater than, less than, and so on, and equal to. All right, pause it and try B. Okay, there's what B looks like. Remember, your domain is only integers. Integers, so don't choose everything. You're only allowed to use the integers. Okay, C. There's your answer to C. All right, pause it and try D. Okay, that looks somewhat familiar probably to you. And if you went ahead and use a calculator, and all on all of these, you can use a calculator. Um, by the way, look at this very quickly. Uh, anytime you have 256, whatever it is, if you multiply by pi, you divide by three, pi is about three. So this is a little more than, 3.14 divided by three is a little more than one. So 256 times a little more than one gives you your answer. That's a reasonable answer. Okay, pause it and try E. Okay, there we go. All right, and you guys have a great day. Memorize those uh, formulas, or at least write them down so you can go back and quickly flip back to your card or your notes or whatever and use them as fast as you can. And after a few weeks go by, you won't need any more. All right, see you guys next time.